This is the Superberry. It's a synthesizer inspired by our favorite melodramatic trance melodies. It's based around the classic Supersaw oscillator, but takes it a step further by using an FM core that allows for some special tricks. The layout and controls are kept minimal and focused for a great balance between sweet spots and sound design. It features a super sharp super saw oscillator, a stackable sub oscillator, a pretty ordinary attack hold release envelope, a flexible LFO modulator, and two diffusing delays we call bokeh. Superberry for Max for Live comes in two devices, roulette and superberry. The roulette device houses our polyasymmetric sequencer inside of Live, which you can use to sequence any MIDI enabled instrument. Roulette deals with polymetric patterns and asymmetric rhythm and pitch data, making it capable of generating long evolving melodies quite easily. You can think of it as a sort of algorithmic arpeggiator. The Superberry device is the main synth engine and features our finely tuned face modulation based oscillators. It's capable of anything from classic super saw leads to more enigmatic FM tones. The effects section is composed of two of our diffusing bokeh delays, which can blur the lines between rhythmic echoes and pure ambiance. To load the Max for Live devices into Live, simply drag and drop the AMXD file onto a MIDI track. You can also put them in your Max for Live devices folder, or just add any folder with Superberry in it to Live's browser for quick and easy access. While the look of the Max for Live devices are a bit different, they have the exact same functionality as the standalone Superberry application and are fully controllable inside of Live. In the Superberry synth voice, you'll find a bright and flexible super saw using seven individual phase modulation oscillators that can be detuned into a familiar chorus-like sound. The detune parameter offsets the pitch of the super saw cluster, starting from no detuning to full super saw around 80%. Above that and up to 100%, it will spread to octaves, with a bunch of weird metallic tones in between. Using mix, you can set the balance between the oscillator cluster and the bass. This is useful for taming some of those more out there detune settings. The brightness knob controls the harmonics of the super saw, all the way from a pure sine wave to a super sharp sawtooth. The sub oscillator is a bit simpler. It's a single oscillator that can be used to add bass or top end to the super saw. It features two different waveforms, pulse and triangle. The pulse wave has adjustable pulse width, meaning you can make it sound full or more narrow. The triangle wave, however, features a wave folder, creating sharp and metallic timbres the less width you have. By default, the sub oscillator will always sound buzzy, but if you enable linking between the super saw brightness and the sub oscillator, you can control the harmonics of both using the brightness knob. The oscillators in Superberry are all based on phase modulation, or more commonly called FM synthesis. All the sawtooths, triangles, and even pulse width modulations are made using phase modulation of simple sine waves. There is no actual filter, the brightness is using our FM core to coax these intricate sounds out of basic waves. What this means is that it's possible to go from a pure sine wave into a complex virtual analog style waveform just by turning the brightness knob. And if you use the LFO in pitch sync mode, you can do direct phase modulation to create more classic FM timbres. Speaking of the LFO, this is our flexible modulator that you can use to introduce motion into your sound. It can be routed into most of the synth voice parameters and features all the classic waveforms. Besides that, the LFO can be tempo synced, pitch tracked, and re-triggered per note. And using the fade parameter, you can fade the LFO modulation in or out every time there is a note trigger. You can also introduce some randomness to the LFO with the jitter parameter, from a shaky waveform to fully random signals. Last but not least, we have an amp envelope to control the dynamics of the synth voice. Attack hold release are used to set the fade in time, the duration until fade out, and finally the fade out time itself. This envelope is particularly snappy and can be set to very short times for dramatic plucks. If you enable hold to note, the hold time will be determined by the MIDI note length instead. You can also use the envelope to control the brightness amount by turning the bright knob. Superberry also features an effects section with two of our diffusing bokeh delays. 
The name bokeh refers to the blur produced by out-of-focus points of light in the lens of a camera, and the delay takes inspiration from that effect. By turning up the blur parameter, the delay will start to diffuse and smudge until it sounds almost like a reverb. Delay A can also be sent to delay B to make a chain of delays or reverbs for an intricate landscape of sound. Both of the delays feature tone and feedback controls, which set how much high or low frequencies there are and how many times the echoes will repeat. Roulette is the name of our poly-asymmetric sequencer. What both being polymetric and asymmetric means is that each section of roulette has its own individual length, and the rhythm, pitch, and velocity data are all asymmetric as a result. This allows you to construct complex relationships between the different patterns for an almost generative sequence. Since the different patterns will rotate around each other, it's possible to make sequences that will evolve over time and almost never repeat. The sequence in roulette begins with the pitch section. This is the initial pitch data and can hold up to 16 pitches by changing the LEN value. These pitches are then sent into the transpose section, which takes the initial pitch and transposes it in semitone intervals. The transpose values are typed in, and depending on how many characters you enter, the pattern will automatically become that length. A transpose value of zero will not affect the incoming pitch but anything above or below will. For example, a value of 5 is a perfect 4th, and a value of 7 a perfect 5th, 12th is an octave, and so on. What makes it possible to generate complex and evolving patterns is that there are two transposed stages. The second transpose will transpose the first, and since all of the patterns are polymetric, having different lengths, you can make sequences that use these relationships to form intricate melodies. The div parameter on each stage will divide the incoming clock pulse, meaning that each value will be repeated as many times as set by the div value. The trig section determines when a note is sent or not, and which note is sent depends entirely on where the other sections are at. Think of it more as a rhythmic pattern than fixed notes. The length and clock division of the trigs can be set by the trig division and len parameter. The clock division will also affect all of roulette and is useful for playing half-time or other interesting subdivisions of the tempo. Lastly, the velocity lane can be used to introduce a dynamic pattern for the trigs. This works much like the transpose section, but advances per trig. Simply type in MIDI values to create a velocity pattern. All of this is a bit wild and sometimes hard to tame, but since you can easily set roulette to quantize everything to a particular scale and tonic, you can just mess around with these different sections for surprising and interesting melodies. It's also possible to set a random range for each value in the transpose and velocity sections by entering the percentage character before any number. This will generate a random output from zero to whatever number you enter for that step. That's the Superberry. We hope you enjoy using it as much as we did making it. <laughs>